Hi, ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson, and this is the first of a three-part series that I'm doing called Tips for First-Year Teachers. In this first episode, we're talking about staying organized. This is gonna take a little bit of experimentation to find the system that works for you and your personality and your grade level and your content. The first realm that you wanna stay organized is in lesson planning. Do you wanna keep your lesson plans on a paper pencil kind of system or a digital system? I myself like to use digital tools to keep track of all the things that I need to do in my upcoming classes. One of my favorite tools to do this is something called plan board. Before I found out about plan board, I had an Excel spreadsheet and then it had like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday across the top. And then throughout the day, it went down the side and I kind of filled in these little boxes. Plan board is pretty much like that, except not only do you have that week at a glance view, you can actually go into each individual day and you can put whatever your schedule is and whatever classes you're teaching. You can bullet point the things that you're going to be covering in that class. You can drop links to videos in there or really any other resources that you want to be able to pull up quickly at the beginning of class. So that way you don't have to keep all of the tabs open or search for what you're looking for on the spot, but you can just click and it's there. When you're on the daily view, there's also like a little sticky note spot where I would usually list the things that I need to do before class starts. Make copies of this document or be sure to email that parent back. Don't forget to grab string from the science closet for the experiment later today. If you're someone that likes to kind of fill in things by hand and have it in front of you and always with you, I haven't used this tool, but my wife uses planners from Aaron Condren. They are not the cheapest planners, but they are fully customizable. I know they have quite a few different styles and formats that are specifically geared towards teachers. And even within that, you can kind of say what type of cover you want or what kind of pages you want or, or what you want your month or your week view to look like and things like that. And so find a way to keep your lesson plans organized. The other realm of organization is student work. Again, a lot of teachers will probably have a mix of paperwork and digital work that they're trying to organize with students. For paperwork that students turn in, I have an in folder and an out folder. The in folder is my ungraded work. The out folder is the graded work that needs to go back to students. I don't just stuff all of the papers in there. If I have multiple classes, I'll paperclip the classes from that class together so they all stay together and I'm not getting second periods mixed with fifth periods and things like that. On my in folder, my ungraded folder, the left side is actually for any assessments that students need to finish. A lot of times I'll have a student that doesn't finish in class and so I'll put it in there. So this is ungraded, but it's also unfinished. The right side is finished, but I haven't graded it yet. On my graded folder, the left side, it has been graded already, but I haven't put it into the grade book yet because I like to do all of my grading and then put it into the grade book. And then the right side is, okay, it's graded, it's in the grade book, and it's ready to get passed back out to students. As far as keeping digital work organized, if your school has a learning management system or LMS, that may be the best route since your admin probably wants you to be using that. My school uses one that has attendance and grades and class websites all in one place. And so when I put an assignment up, students can turn in their digital assignment on that one place and it, it organizes it all for me. Before we moved to this system though, I used Google Classroom, which is really helpful if you're a Google Apps for Education School, your students have their own Gmail account and Google Drive and things like that. Google Classroom keeps you from having to have students share a document with you, but instead you can post an assignment on Google Classroom and then students can go there and then attach their assignment there. That way it's all together, it's all in one place. Google automatically adjusts the sharing privileges so you can actually see see it and you don't get the message when you click on a student's assignment that says you don't have permission to see this file, click here to request access. And so I haven't used Google Classroom in about a year because we did move to this new system. But the last time I was using it, it was awesome. And I can only imagine it's gotten better since then. If you are not a Google school, find the teacher of the year from your school last year and then go and ask them, how do you keep track of all of the digital work that your students turn in? Hopefully they'll have a good answer. If they don't, find the teacher that has a reputation for being the techie teacher and then ask them what they do. I found that asking other teachers tech questions is usually more fruitful than asking the IT person tech questions, mainly because the IT person doesn't really work with students and technology in the sense of organizing files and using tools with the students, at least not to the capacity that a classroom teacher does. And so that is my tip to you as a first year teacher. Stay organized in your lesson planning and managing student work. If you'd like to stay in the loop with the remaining two episodes of tips for first year teachers that'll be coming out soon, go ahead and hit subscribe. In addition to tips like this, I have teaching vlogs and other reflections on teaching. And so if you are a teacher or an aspiring teacher and you are wanting to grow in your practice, you are the teacher that I'm making these videos for. So I'm hoping that this brings value to you. If you found this video helpful, hit that little thumbs up button because it'll help other people find the video when they're looking for tips for new teachers content. I'm Tom Gibson. I hope you learned something today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.